Hey everyone, I'm Casey Hollins and you're watching the Sportsnet Digital Dose. We've got Mike Johnston from Sportsnet.ca in studio today and we're talking a little bit of UFC. There's a, a big event this weekend and there's been a lot this month actually, hasn't there? A lot. So far, one every weekend in April. There's one next week. It's a, it's a great time, great month for, uh, for UFC fans. Yeah, the weather's not great. Stay inside. No. Don't, you know, you can't be drinking on a patio late at night yet. So exactly. there's, so much, there's only so much hockey a person can watch. This right? is true. You know, watch well, some MMA. For some Canadians. For That's some, there's no limit. That's anyway, That's we're getting true. away from the point yes. here. This, this weekend's event is a little bit different than some other ones. It's a little bit unique. Can you tell me why? Well, it, it's very interesting how this worked out. The UFC didn't set it up this way, but this card, eight of the 12 fights are featuring a UFC fighter taking on a former Strike Force fighter. And, you know, fans have always been curious about which, you know, they've sort of viewed UFC fighters as better than Strike Force mm -hmm. fighters, as a level above. But uh, so far in a few fights, we, we've seen that the Strike Force fighters that have already come over to the UFC, they've done very well. And so this card uh, as a whole could be an indication of really how how underrated were all these strike force fighters uh, coming over and the, the the main the main event is is a it's really a super fight it's Gilbert Melendez the former strike force lightweight champion he's fighting Benson Henderson the UFC champion the former WEC champion um, and it's it's really a super fight a lot of people talked about Frankie Edgar versus Jose Aldo as a super fight these guys are current champions mm -hmm. essentially it's a title unification bout and Gilbert Melendez arguably was the top talent in Strike Force, and now he's going to be making uh, an appearance inside the Octagon. People are very excited about it. The main event might not go his way. Benson Henderson's on a roll. He's looked unbeatable in his UFC tenure. And but the Strike Force versus UFC thing, it's it's an interesting angle that fans are definitely excited about. Last year there was an all heavyweight card. There's just this extra buzz mm -hmm. at UFC 158 in Montreal. There was uh, some of the top welterweights in the sport all on the same card. So it creates this this extra little buzz. So mm -hmm. it'll be very exciting. It's definitely just a little bit more interesting to yeah. have that, that dynamic to it. Yeah. Now, can you tell me if there are any Canadians we should be looking out for on any of the, well, on this card? Yeah, uh, Jordan Meehan, <clears throat> he actually fought just a little while ago in Montreal, UFC 158. An Alberta kid, he's, he's come into the UFC, it was his UFC debut in Montreal, and he looked fantastic. He uh, beat Dan Miller in that fight, first fighter to ever stop Dan Miller. He did it in one round. And actually backstage in Montreal, I passed Dana White before the main card started. And, and I said, hey, Dana, how about Jordan Mean? And he said, these strike force guys are good. Mm -hmm. So Jordan Mean, he's one of these strike force fighters I was talking about. And, uh, you know, he's, he's taking on Matt Brown, a very tough, very durable knockout artist. Been around a while. He's on a hot streak as well. Stylistically, this is a very good matchup for Jordan. And to win, if he is to win on Saturday, two wins over two veterans, two quality opponents, mm -hmm. really will shoot him up the ranking. So he's a fun fighter to watch at the end of the day as well. So fans, if you didn't catch his 158 fight, you know, you don't want to miss this one. He's so fun to watch. And he's the top talent uh, coming out of Canada outside of Rory McDonald. It's sort of the consensus. Rory's the top young kid and Jordan Means right behind him. And so Jordan Mean, keep an eye out for, the, for this guy. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask about one more thing. An interesting story in one of the prelim fights. One of the guys cut a bunch of weight very, very quickly. He was, if I remember correctly, he was around 200 pounds like three months ago. Yeah, Roger Bowling, uh, another former Strike Force fighter. He typically, you know, he's fought at welterweight, 170 pounds in the past. It, it's very common for fighters to cut a lot of weight. You know, your, your average person you know, losing 20 pounds, you don't do it in a two-day period. But for fighters, it's sort of part of their routine. For a lot of fighters, a, a lot of them cut uh, a significant amount of weight to compete. And Roger Bowling, yeah, 12 weeks ago, he was just about uh, 200 pounds, and he'll be fighting at lightweight. Mm -hmm. So, and that's 155 pounds. So, he, you know, these, these are professional athletes as well. They don't have a lot of body fat to lose to begin with. So, you know... Uh, for, for your average person, losing that much weight in, in a short period of time, it sounds unhealthy, and mm -hmm. it can be very unhealthy, but 
these guys are monitored by professionals. They are professionals. They do it, you know, annually. So, so hopefully he makes weight and, and, and everything's fine and people can just focus on the fight itself. But it is pretty crazy when you think of how much weight the, he, these guys in general and, and Roger in particular are losing. Absolutely. He doesn't seem too concerned about making weight, but I would be concerned about losing some of your strength. Like you said, they don't have much body fat, so... Yeah. It's not like they're losing bone. They're no, losing they're, they're not losing bone. <laughs> um, you know, but he but he has said, you know, he's he's transferred a lot of the, the body fat that he did have into muscle. He's eating cleaner, leaner, and you know, he thinks it's gonna work out for him, so so we'll we'll definitely see. All of that is just terrifying. It's superhuman. Because like you said, they don't have much body fat to begin with, so to turn what's left into muscle is a little bit freaky. Yeah. Anyway, it will be very exciting. Sportsnet very has got coverage of all of this. Beginning with the prelims, we've got stuff starting at 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern on sportsnet.ca. I think I have that right. And uh, and then the rest is at 5 o'clock on TV. So, yes. yeah, Sportsnet will have all of it. Like we said, it's not supposed to be that warm on Saturday here in Toronto. Stay so in. Stay, stay in and watch some people fight. Turn on Sportsnet. For gosh sakes, just watch some UFC on Saturday. Yes.